Hello, hackers. Welcome to Pwn College. I'm Jan, and today we're going to be talking about hexadecimal. Typically, base 16 representation of binary data. We talked about bits in the previous video, and of course your computer doesn't think about bits individually. It very rarely thinks about bits individually. It thinks about bits in groups, typically groups of eight, um, which is called a byte. A byte wasn't always eight bits. Historically, before the 1960s, we've, uh, we would see machines with byte defined as anywhere from six to 36 bits wide. Um, and uh, the eight bit byte was really uh, driven by text encoding. IBM created a concept of a byte where a single byte, eight bits, would represent a letter. Uh, of you know the English language plus numbers etc cetera, etc cetera. basically a text character that spread far and wide um, that standard and created by accident almost the eight bit byte that we know and love today you can imagine an alternate universe where the byte uh, size of a computer is 10 16 probably it'll be a power of two but um, in this universe it is Eight. So eight bits make a byte. We take these bits um, and uh, uh, we put them together into a byte. And in the previous video, we talked about how hexadecimal is a really useful representation for binary data. And in this case, if you look at those first four digits, four first four bits, zero, one, one, zero, and we translate it in our head to a number, that number is six in base 10, it's also six in base 16, since everything under 10 is the same there. So we talked about how four bits, which can represent from uh, values from zero to two to the fourth, which is 16, from zero to 16, is the same range as one hex digit. So we can encode <coughs> and represent this four bits as the hex number six. And on the right, we see one zero zero zero, which is eight, and on the the four bits on the right can be represented by yet another hex digit eight. Now, these individual groups of four bits that are represented by a hex um, uh, digit, these are called nibbles. You can spell them with a Y to be cute. Typically, they're actually spelled with an I. Um, this term is very rarely used. Typically, you reason about a byte at a time, and a byte is represented by two, two hex digits. Uh, a nibble is represented by one. Each hex digit, again, four bits of representation. If you have multiple bytes in your CPU and you want to represent multiple bytes in hex, well, you can just kind of reason about each individually and then concatenate them, right? So if you were for example, uh, looking through a debugger or a hex editor or something at these values, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on, um, each of those bytes would be lifted, would be represented as two hex digits, and then we would get a big chunk of hex to represent that binary data. And this is hex representation, right? Oftentimes, you are actually using um, the lens of hexadecimal to view data that's actually in binary. If you're doing this in a um, hex editor, you open up a file in a hex editor, well, the data inside that file is binary and it stays binary. So what you're seeing is a hex representation of it. But you can also use hex to transmit binary data uh, over channels where binary data is inconvenient to transfer. So for example, if I had an arbitrary image file full of crazy ones and zeros and everything, right? And I wanted to write it down on a piece of paper, of course I could encode it as binary, as, as actual literal bits. I could write down one, zero, zero, one. That would take forever, right? For every byte, I would have to write eight different digits, but it's much easier to encode it as hex where I translate the data to hex and I write that down on a piece of paper and it's easy to write, it's easy to read because it's zero through nine and eight through F. And then I hand you the piece of paper and you type it in. And of course, 
you can hex decode that data. So I can hex encode a file, as you can see here, using the xxd command, the parameter dash ps, and then my file. And it takes the file, it reads it out, and this is the same data as we had above, and it encodes it in hex, prints it out to you. That's neat, right? Then if I sent that over to you, you could type that back in and you can uh, use XXD with the dash PS for the, the selecting the hex encoding and dash R to reverse it to decode and you can get your file, uh, the decoded file back. Very useful for, again, humans dealing with binary data because you can actually type this stuff. You can type it easily. You don't have to use one o one o one o one o one, and you can think about it a lot more. You 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 start reasoning about um, as you start understanding that hey six is one one zero zero. No, that's not true. Six is zero one one zero, whereas uh, uh, c is one one zero zero. All right, you can very quickly notice the hex digits, translate them into nibbles in your hand, head, combine those nibbles into bytes, and it is a awesome world of hex. So that's hexadecimal. Stay tuned for more encoding.